not create an environment that where family and friends take advantage of it. All of these are simple business practices, but it requires great deal of understanding. We believe this fund, along with local entrepreneurs, along with local industries, would be able to help small, young entrepreneurs in their drive to create new businesses, new opportunities in local areas. We do realize that we need local solutions, local talent, and at times a lot of these things will have to focus on local languages. There is a great deal of innovation going on in India today. People are innovating. People at village level are equally creative. But somehow we have not been able to scale a lot of these innovations. Simultaneously, along with innovations, we are also focusing on creating public information infrastructure. As part of that, we have two main programs. One, to connect 1,500 nodes with 40 gigabit bandwidth to connect all our universities, all our major R&D institutions, and major libraries. Knowing that all research today is multidisciplinary, requires great deal of collaboration, and is happening faster than ever before. So this digital network called National Knowledge Network which is being created at the cost of about $2 billion by the government, is going to be very critical in connecting talent pools to really collaborate and share information. Another program is related to connecting 250,000 local governments, panchayats, to optical fiber with, again, tens of gigabits of bandwidth, a tower at the end of the fiber link so that other private entrepreneurs can put in their wireless facilities to connect small entrepreneurs, schools, colleges, hospitals, and other facilities. This network, which is still being defined, however, government has approved Building this network will cost us probably around four or five billion dollars. Fortunately, we have a lot of this funding in the USO fund. In addition to these two major networks of fiber optics, high capacity, high bandwidth connectivity, we are creating platforms for UID, GIS, cyber security applications payment, procurement, and portals. This is a huge program geared towards taking digital technology to remote areas of the country. Knowing that young talent in remote areas is equally capable. Knowing that we need information highways to really build knowledge institutions and infrastructure in the 21st century. These are big government programs where government will probably spend 15, 20 billion dollars in the next three to five years to come. All of these programs are really geared towards sustainable growth, 9 to 10 percent, inclusive growth, innovations, skill development. I hope this gives you a little bit of a feel as to what government is planning to do. I hope this will help our young entrepreneurs in their endeavor. I hope it will also add 
to the innovative efforts going on in India. We believe there is a unique window of opportunity here. When I started my initial work in telecom in India, we had 2 million telephones for 750 million people. It used to take then 15 years to get telephone connection. Today, we have over 800 million cell phones. We are a nation of a connected billion. We have very large IT industry. We generate $70 billion worth of export in IT and related services. That number is going to go to about 200 billion. We have our own large multinational. We have foreign exchange reserve. All of this has given India a fair deal of confidence. And as a result, we believe we are at a tipping point. And at this point, innovation is going to be very critical. To focus on innovation, we would need more venture capital. We would need more connectivity and lot more education on innovation, entrepreneurship, ecosystems, and encouragement and incentives by government. I am delighted that Sankal has taken the lead in this area. I am delighted that this conference will bring many experts together to debate, discuss issues related to bottom of the pyramid, inclusive growth, innovation. And I hope National Innovation Council can work with Sankalp and many of you to really help each other. We have a huge task ahead of us. We recognize that these things take 10, 15 years to give substantial results. We don't expect quick fixes. It's a journey that we are starting. We need a lot many more people to join us in this journey. It is going to be difficult because it's hard to change the mindset in India. It is hard to make believers out of people who don't want to make a move. And that's when the young talent comes in. The technology of ICT is the technology of the young. And I hope we can use this technology to really galvanize our young talent. On campuses at universities, in industries, in villages, to really address the big, big issues related to basic human needs. At the end of the day, our main challenge for the next couple of decades is to bring in 300 million people who are below poverty line into the mainstream. Though we are growing at 9%, but the real growth would demand that it percolates down to the bottom of the pyramid and we can lift large number of people out of poverty, give them better standard of living, improve our infrastructure, improve education, nutrition, health services, increase agricultural productivity, and that's where innovations are required. Once again, I want to thank Sankal for giving me this opportunity. I hope I have given you sort of a road map as to what we plan to work on at the National Innovation Council. We look to your support and help with this. Thank you, and I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Petruda. The floor is open for questions, please. Sam, this is Vineet. Uh, just would be useful for actually the audience to, if you can elaborate, uh, would this fund be a government-run fund or would it actually be run by professionals? Partly because a lot of people will fear 
that government will come and dump money and then actually completely destroy the commercial side of it. I can assure you that will not happen. It is not going to be a government fund. It will be initiated with seed capital by government, very little. It will be a private, privately managed fund, professionally managed, as well as we know in terms of what others do in the business. It will look for proper IRR. It will not just dump money anywhere and everywhere. It will have investors from outside. It will have investment committees. And just like every other fund that works in US, Europe or India. Thank you, sir. Uh, one more question coming up. Sorry, uh, hi. It's Nikhilesh Sinha from uh, Center for Emerging Market Solutions at uh, the Indian School of Business. Um, the World uh, Intellectual Property Organization uh, did a survey in a couple of developing uh, emerging markets, and they found that intellectual property was something that most SME uh, sort of people in the SME industry didn't really uh, understand or have any use for. When we are in the process of building a sort of uh, innovation toolkit. We have a group working on innovation toolkit and sort of putting together innovation in a box, which is training, understanding of patents, claims, intellectual property, litigation, what to be patented, what not to be patented. There are all kinds of issues related to intellectual and this to cut. India has sort of patent laws, but we understand that a lot of patents may have to be filed in foreign countries, PCTM, take time. A lot of small entrepreneurs don't understand that. I think. But once they realize that it's a good idea, that generates new business opportunities for them, they would begin think about protecting their ideas. Today, very few of these people really have patentable ideas. It takes time. And we realize it's not going to happen overnight. So we need to create incubators, a cluster. I talked about 50 clusters in places like Surat, Madurai, Rajkot, Butala, you know, these are the places where you have cool and dye industries, auto parts, textiles, pharmaceuticals. In this cluster, we need to create incubators. People don't even understand what this means today. So we do realize this is going to take time. But we are starting the process now. And we are getting a lot of support from people, especially industry, academicians, government. But maybe it will succeed. I say Christian. Thank you, sir. Uh, one more question, gentlemen yeah. here. Uh, my name is Bridge Kothari from IAM Ahmedabad.